I'm so excited that you're here. This is the live Q&A that I do every other Thursday. I'm Tamara Manasoff, and I am the creator of the Author to Income Formula. And I'm a book launch strategist helping you bring your books out into the world. And I want to welcome, first of all, all the members have been with me for many, many years here, as well as all the new members have joined. We've had like 30 people join in just the last few days. And so I just want to say thank you for joining our amazing author community. And I'm so glad and delighted that you're here. In fact, I want to make sure to put the spanner up and say hello and say hello in the chat and let me know that you're here. I had quite a few people send me emails saying, hey, I can't be there, but can you please answer these questions for me? So I actually have quite a few, so I will jump in. But please, as you are thinking about uh, the answers to the questions that I'm going to be doing, I'm sure it's going to spark some thoughts uh, for your book launch. Some of you are in the pre-phase while you're working on your manuscripts and you are planning to launch in 2024. Others have already launched and are looking for new and creative ways to market your book, get the word out, sell more books, and also lead people to other products, programs, and services that you have to offer. So with that said, I'm going to jump right in. And one of the questions I get asked all the time is, what can I do to build my author platforms? Because sometimes we get so focused on, on writing our manuscripts that we don't really take the time, like carving out actual time to build our uh, visibility as well as connection with your prospective readers. So it's really important. You already have the information. If you're a nonfiction author, your book is packed with information. You're likely already an expert in your field. And so one of the things that you want to do is take something really good out of your book, some one of the best things out of your book. Don't be afraid of giving it away because then people will be like, oh, wow, that's incredible. I learned so much from this one little thing. I'm, that means that this author, the author's book is going to teach me so much more. So don't be afraid to give your best information away and be really generous. And that will come back to you. So think about the content in your book and what it is that you can uh, offer. So one example, a nutritionist came to me and said, I have no idea what to you to create for my opt-in to build my email list. An opt-in is something that you give away for free, just as we're discussing, in exchange for an email. And email is so important because email goes directly into people's inboxes. And it's still, I believe, one of the best ways to communicate with your community. So she said, she was a nutritionist and she said, I have no idea. So one of the things I just thought of, well, what is one thing I've always wondered <laughs> and that I haven't found on Google? And uh, what one of the things that popped into my head was I'm always hungry right before bed. You know, I've eaten dinner maybe at five or six. And by the time I'm going to bed at 11, even 12, I'm like ready for dinner all over again. So my question was, you know, what could I eat? where I, it would still be healthy. It wouldn't be, um, you know, it wouldn't gain all this weight, but I would be able to eat it, enjoy it and feel like satisfied. So I wasn't hungry in the night uh, because oftentimes if I'm hungry, I wake up. So she said, oh, that's easy. I'm like, you're kidding. That's your opt in. And she said it was like a Vegas slot machine because when she put that out, it was like just going ding, ding, ding. Uh, people were signing up for her opt ins like crazy. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. Please say hi in the chat and in the comments so I can see you. Uh, welcome, welcome. So just think about something really compelling or think about the questions that people often ask you and just make sure that you are just giving as much as you can in those answers so that it's not, you know, I know you probably know this already. It's very frustrating when someone kind of gives you a little answer or not a whole answer because they want you to buy your product program service. Just give them the answer. Um, and this is a way to build trust and, you know, really a sense of um, connection with the people in your community and in your audience and your prospective readers or your clients. Um, it's a great way to connect with them. So that is one of the best strategies for building an author platform. Of course, you want to and can repurpose your content as another strategy. Repurpose the content that's inside your book, even before your book comes out. 
And you can do short form videos, which you know are very popular right now with little bits of content. Um, like for this 30 minutes that we're gonna spend together or 15 minutes, however long we go, um, there's gonna be a lot of Q and A's in between. Take one really important piece of information that could help your audience and you could do a short form video that you can repurpose and share on all of your social platforms. You don't need to be on all of the social platforms, just the ones that make sense for you. So if you're coming out with a business book, LinkedIn makes sense for you, right? And if you are, you have a young adult book, TikTok may make sense for you or Instagram reels make sense for you. So again, you don't need to be everywhere. Think about the content that you share and where your audience is. And then you can just take little bits and pieces of useful, helpful information. And you could do little snippets and videos. Now, if you don't want to be on camera, you could just do graphics, uh, something just creating that consistency and connection with your audience. So with that said, we'll go on to the next question that someone sent ahead to me. Um, and that is, what is, let me go over to the comments. Okay. Say hello. Hello. I see that you're here. So please say hello in the comments and I should be able to see it here. And Okay, let me go back and I'll put this up on the screen. What is the best month to launch your book? That's a great question. It really depends on the topic. So think about, there's a couple of kind of broad sweeping months that are good. January, fresh new start, regardless of what your topic is. Usually it's like people, New Year's resolution, like you want to really do that thing that you said you're going to do, or you're wanting to create those new habits or uh, you know, you want to put your new your business into order or whatever it is, right? So think about January. April's great too because it's kind of like a also a fresh start, spring cleaning, reorganization. Okay, uh, you know, the first part of the year is over. What, how do I want to refocus? And 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 so April, May are also very good. And then September also it's kind of like okay everyone's back if you're especially if you are a parent your kids are back in school it's kind of refocus for uh the big push for the end of the year so that would be that is also a good month can you publish your book in other months yes you can think about the media national trends if you have a book that is associated with a national trend then that could be a perfect time for you to launch your book. One of my books was focused on moms. It was the Mom Inventor's Handbook, How to Turn Your Great Idea into the Next Big Thing. So we launched it on Mother's Day. So these are the things to be thinking about. What's the topic of your book? Is it associated with a national trend or uh, an awareness month, a national awareness month? And the reason why it's so, that's important too is the media loves that. So if you're coming out and you have your book topic is associated with a national awareness month, then you can pitch your book to the media and say, hey, my book is coming out and it aligns perfectly with the whatever the month is. And I'd love to be a guest on your show. So it, it helps to, to pitch your, um, your book in that way as if you're aligning it uh, with a national awareness or trend. Okay, I hope that was helpful. How much time do I need to launch? So one of the important things is to pick your launch day and then work backwards. So you can work backwards three months is what I like to have. Four months is great, but three months is perfectly fine. And that's when you really want to get completely organized and focused about your launch and putting all the systems and processes in place for your email campaigns, directing everyone to purchase your book on a single day so that the rankings go up in Amazon. And so you just need time to make sure that you're doing all of that. And it's it's important too, because you want to have all of that done and, and uh, ready to go so that you're not scrambling around launch day. And I've had people say, oh, my book's coming out next week, and they've not had a plan. They've had no launch plan. So it's really important to think, okay, my book is coming out in, in April of next year. So in January, you want to think about, okay, who are my ambassadors going to be? Who am I going to ask 
to help support my launch? Um, who can I count on to purchase my book on launch day? Are Am I associated with any or affiliated with any organizations that might feature me in their newsletter or help me get the word out? So you want to start building this um, community to help you launch. It's not just by yourself. And then leading everybody to your party on your launch day and having everyone send out their posts and emails and join you in the effort to launch successfully. So it really takes a village um, to launch successfully. When I say successfully, you can always publish uh, your, your book on Amazon. But if you're wanting to really have a bestseller book launch, you want to get everybody to help you uh, purchase a book on that single day and to get all that visibility and um, awareness around your book coming out on that date. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. And hey, it's so good to see you. I can't see who you are. You have to give Facebook uh, and StreamYard connect. Uh, uh, we have to give them permission. So you should be able to see that if you go to, oh, I know I can put it on the, on the I would love to see who you are. I, I'd love to see. Thank you for saying hello. Um, if you go here to this link, and I think it's in the, I think uh, StreamYard put it already in this broadcast up at the top above this video. If you go streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, and it's just like one click, then I can see your profile picture. And it makes it so nice to, to have that. So if you want to go do that, that would be awesome. And if you have any questions, do let me know. And let me see what else. I've got so many in today. So let me see. Um... Oh, yeah. This is a very good one. Actually, I get asked this all the time. Do I publish my Kindle and paper book at the same time? This is a strategic question and very important. And the answer is it depends. If you have a large email following, you have uh, also you have a strong following on social media and people are already consistently purchasing maybe your workshops or coaching or whatever it is that you you offer then you have the support to launch your paperback version because people you need to <clears throat> you need to have a loyal following to get people to purchase a book that's you know $15 right if someone doesn't know you they may not want to spend $15 cuz they don't know that you're amazing and the content you're sharing is really helpful so be sure and think about what's real like, do you actually have people in on your list and in social media that will purchase your book on launch day? If you do, I say go for it with launching your paperback. And I always tell my private clients, <clears throat> so I'm sharing you sharing some insider feedback. Stagger your launch, meaning if you've got a strong following, go out with your paperback and get it to number one. And then a couple of weeks later, already have your Kindle book ready. A couple of weeks later, say, oh my gosh, the response was so amazing. I'm so excited. Now here's the Kindle book. And then it's going to create a whole nother rush. So a mistake that authors often make is they publish both at the exact same time. That doesn't do anything from you. And they're totally separate, by the way. So it will dilute your rankings, right? So if people are buying paperback and they're buying Kindle at the same time, it's diluting your rankings. So you want to make sure to stagger them. That's a really important strategy. Now, let's say you come to me and you're like, Tamara, oh my gosh, I have no following. I have no email. I've got nothing <laughs> except for my knowledge, uh, you know, and expertise, which is something. Uh, so if that is the case, then you're going to want to flip it. And you're going to want to do a low cost Kindle version of your book. And I know a lot of authors are like, but I've spent two years writing my book. Oh my gosh, I can't bear the thought of giving it away for $4.99, uh, $2.99 to $4.99, wherever it makes sense. But here's the thing. It'll only stay that price for a short time. And that's a low resistance price. So if you really don't know people, uh, then they're going to take a chance with you. And we're likely to take a chance with you at $2.99 to $4.99 than they are going to pay for a $15 to $18 book. So just something to think about. Uh, you need to, you know the answer to this. Like you actually know uh, about your community size and how much, how much big of a following you have. So that's something really important. 
is actually where I start with a lot of my private clients, my book launch clients, uh, because we get real <laughs> about what their community, the str strength of their community is. And then when we, if, you know, when we have that honest conversation, then we pick the strategy that makes sense so that they have success and can still become a bestseller because you can still become a bestseller even without all of the um, author platform. However, it's much easier and faster and less stressful if you work on building your platform, building your email list, getting on social media well before your, your launch. So it's something to carve out time on your calendar every single week to do these things to build your platform so that your launch is uh, it's successful without you know all the, uh, well, we always, put all our energy into it, but you know what I mean? Um, that we can, it's, it's a little bit easier when you know you've got a whole core of people who are definitely gonna buy your book on launch day. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm, uh, I am often asked too, is how many books do I need to sell to become a number one bestseller on, on launch day? I can't answer that question because it depends on what category your book is sold. So if you are a in the business and money category and you are you are competing with some of the biggest authors uh, in business and money, um, then you need to sell more books. However, one of the strategies that you can do always is you can look at these big arching categories, but then select more niche categories so that you're not competing with your competitors at that level. But in fact, we're able to select those key keywords and categories that can put you in a little bit more obscure category, but still is appropriate for your content of your book, really important. And, uh, and those are the ways that we can work behind the scenes to help you on, on launch day. So I, I think you should, at least what I have seen from all the launches I've done, you want to really have in your mind that you need to sell at a minimum of about 350 books, paperback books on launch day. Uh, it's fewer if it's a Kindle book. Um, again, that's not in stone. It's just a guided number uh, from what I've seen behind the scenes. Uh, so just think about that. And then I have authors often say to me, hey, welcome. Say hello in the chat if you just joined. I often have authors say to me, well, I can for sure get 350 people to buy on launch day. Well, that's awesome. But then when we come down to it, oftentimes we're just like the week before launch and everyone's like, I don't know if I can get that many people. That's a lot of books to sell on launch day. So uh, really be realistic. And one of the things you can do is actually create a list. Okay. Uh, you know, who are your ambassadors? You've got 10 people that you can count on who are going to help promote your book and they have an audience of x number like actually pay attention to those numbers and really look at your email list you know how engaged are your is your audience uh, in social media are people signing up for your other products programs, services coaching whatever it is that you offer workshops retreats whatever it is uh, so be sure and be realistic about that and you can become a bestseller on launch day. You just need to not have any of this be a surprise for you, right? You need to actually plan this out three to four months ahead of time. So everything is buttoned up. And so you can arrive at your party and just go, ah, you know that you've done the work to prepare for your launch. Okay, let me jump over to comments. Hey, good to see you. Um, Okay, I can't see who you are. So a please, please say hello. I'm so thrilled that you're here. And please do put any questions in the comments. Also, um, you need to do that link. I think I shared with you earlier. And I thought I thought um, StreamYard put it. Let me go right here. I thought it StreamYard put it ahead. But I, can, I can't see who you are unless you go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. And I thought... Above this uh, in the description, I thought StreamYard automatically put it in. I'm very curious, actually. If you see it up there, can you just say yes so I know? Um, that would be really helpful. Okay. I'm going to work through a couple more questions. And then if you have any questions, please pop them into the comments now uh, because we only have a few more minutes together. So, all right. Here's the next one. Now, this one... This one was new to me and I was like, huh, I really didn't know about that. I hadn't even thought about this. 
whoa, I've had two people ask me in the last week, what happens to my book if I were to pass away? It was like, how have I been doing this since 2005 and hadn't really thought about that? Wow, great question. So I actually looked up in KDP and this is what they say. That you want to put your login details and instructions in your estate documents, so your will. Uh, and then indicate who that, you know, the, the executor is and that person can then contact KDP with the appropriate documentation and then get the bank account changed over. But that you should actually put this in writing and, and with instructions. And so I was like, oh my gosh, that was a really great question that I just honestly had not even thought about before. So that's something to think about. If you don't want to uh, do this, at least have some a member of your family or somebody that you trust and care about uh, give them this information, your KDB login or whatever you think is appropriate. But this is specific. And I, I say dot, 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 because I couldn't get the full response in here. It says, in your estate documents, provide um, KDP login details so that your heir can contact KDP with necessary papers, and then they will give you instructions on how to switch the account over or close the account or whatever it makes sense for the situation. So interesting question. I had honestly, in all these years, I think it's been 18 years, I had never thought about, but it's smart. So I hope this is that served you well. It's so good that you're here. If you're watching the replay, please do put your questions in the comments and I always go back and look and then we can answer this again. I'll be here every other Thursday for live Q&A. And if you're needing help with, you've already launched your book, but you're like scratching your head because your, your book sales don't exist. You're frustrated. You don't know how to get the momentum back. Uh, please do put those questions in the chat because uh, coming up, I'm going to be doing a book master a book marketing mastermind uh with actually some really cool things so if you're interested in that put yes in caps in the comments below and i am going to be showing you how to create an incredibly powerful book marketing plan that actually works not one that you're like haphazardly posting here and there and hoping for the best so as you know, I like plans and structure and systems, and then we can actually get stuff done and you can become a bestseller and then keep the momentum after your launch. So with that said, thank you for joining. Let me go back over. And uh, again, post your questions below. I hope you found this to be useful and I look forward to seeing you the next time. Bye.